sometimes when working with color, you gotta like get it all hashed in there before you can really even tell what you're seeing. I'm just gonna prepare the paint for the canvas by adding uh, a medium called Galkid Light made by Gamblin. It's the same, or it's, it's like Damar varnish. It won't dry for like two weeks if I don't mix this with it. Um, so, and I wanna move faster than that. So, and the paint is horribly expensive, can be. And so you, uh, this will make it last longer. But um, that being said, I just use plate glass. It's got the edges browned off. I should be wearing gloves. Unfortunately, I'm not. You're just looking at this photograph and you're analyzing how dark, say the greens, how dark the green is and how, if it's more of a yellowish green or a bluish green. This turns out to be a very bluish green, this uh, permanent green light. And my sap green is my more yellow side. And then I'll go and I'll mix black in with this to get those rich. I'll mix a, a deep dark black green and I also have uh, thalo turquoise. You can always add a color's complement to it w when mixing paint to lower the value and lower the chroma and it will not change the hue. Yellow can very easily shift to green or orange, but if you add the complement to it, it won't shift. Same with red and green and blue and orange. I'm going to mix cad yellow pale hue with dioxine purple just a little bit you know and I don't even know if I'm going to use this color but that does look pretty sweet So, I guess we are. We found our color. So there we have a gradient to... Some of this stuff is just really dark yellows. Like this is a, a whole flower back there that it is in cast shadow. So the whole thing is this putrid green but some areas of it are very dark. And so I mixed up a gradient. Hey, you gotta remember, you gotta dance. The bright yellow to dominate. And it's like you can't have all incredibly vibrant high chroma colors. It looks like there's just too much color in it. it no, everything competes and nothing is allowed to shine through. Whereas this yellow has a whole bunch of this neutral pukey looking green and it has a whole bunch of black. Now where we're at is we've just put paint down, right? And, and now we can adjust it. And by that, I mean, you got cubes. Like, 
a yellow on top of a field of green is going to have, it's going to optically look different. It's going to look like a different hue than a yellow on a field of red. So you got to you got to fill it all in, and then you have something to work with if you adjust it. At this point, you probably want to switch over from the Galkid to some type of uh, linseed oil or even just raw paint um, because this drying time, now on the second layer of paint, you want that to be a little bit slower. And we're talking, it, it's, I don't know, I'm talking out of my rump here, but it takes hundred years for oil paint to dry. So we're talking the long run. But you want this next layer of paint to dry slower than this first layer of paint. And that'll stop it from cracking like 20 years down the road. You'll see some old paintings have like spiderweb paint. That's from different drying times of the paint. You gotta get the first layer to dry before. That's why we added Gal Kid and cause it's adds a nice texture to our paint um, and now we're switching over to an oil that will retard the drying time you just kind of adjust it but you can't really tell what you're looking at until you get everything in and then it comes together super quick you'll like oh that looks weird you fix it and then you look and it's like all right I guess it's done the most important thing I would want you to get out of this video would be if you, you can add a color's complement to change its, to alter its chroma. I said value earlier, but it's not always wrong. And then the other thing is that if you add blacks and whites and earth tones and gray tones and all that as a balance to your really bright colors, it will offset everything and it won't be garish. It will be beautiful. Thank you.